A new report finding George Soros, the liberal activist billionaire, gave hundreds of millions of dollars to groups behind yesterday's Day Without a Woman protest. And they're the same groups who marched against President Trump the day after his inauguration. Let's talk about it. Rachel Campos Duffy is a Fox News contributor. Marjorie Clifton is a former consultant to the Obama campaign and a principal of Clifton Consulting. Good to see you both. Nice to see you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Rachel, does it matter who helped fund them? <laughs> of course. And this march was not really about women's rights or equality for women because if it was, I think we would have seen the march move to the front of the uh, Saudi Arabian embassy. Um, you have to ask yourself, why would a billionaire like George Soros fund um, all these organizations behind it? Um, the reason is he's had a lifelong dream of one world government, of elites, um, uh, uh, redistributing wealth and setting up rules for the rest of us. And the uh, biggest existential threat to the advancements he's made through his investment of, of President Obama um, and also his investment in, in the Hillary campaign, which, which, which he didn't get a lot out of, um, is, is Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the biggest threat to any of the advancements that the Obama made in advancing um, his idea of a one world government. Uh, Marjorie, so was this protest more anti-Trump or pro-women? Because you know there are conservative groups who say they haven't been allowed to participate. Pro-life groups uh, and other conservative women who say uh, for them they don't feel like this is strictly about promoting women. It's more about tearing down the president. Your take. Well, I think there's a lot of different reasons that women showed up and frankly why men showed up for these marches and men like George Soros understand that equality and justice for women has to do with a lot of different topics but it also impacts men and our children as well. So George Soros, the man, actually grew up a Hungarian Jew under Nazi Germany and watched half a million people in his community murdered. And that is why his entire life has been dedicated to equality and justice and why his money goes to causes that he perceives as being about equality and justice. So equal pay, access to health care, uh, many of the different reasons that women showed up and men showed up yesterday, uh, again, were all different reasons, but they all contribute to the same message, which is that internationally, women matter. We contribute to the economy, and that's really what the day was about. Well, and Rachel, I mean, really, we're blessed I in this country because uh, around the world, there are women who, they, they can't contribute to the economy. They can't drive cars or vote or leave their house without a man. I mean, uh, do you feel like we got enough of a spotlight on those real issues yesterday as well? Because this was International Women's Day. Absolutely, and I would quibble with her uh, biography of George Soros. Um, in fact, some of the groups that he's funded uh, with, to the tune of millions of dollars um, are groups that have uh, actually been fighting and targeting people who have been fighting Sharia law and exposing how it does um, actually um, hurt women uh, through, through, through um, uh, you know, Sharia law, as we know, promotes genital mu uh, uh, mutilation and, and, and doesn't allow people to, uh, women to drive or, or, or leave their homes without male chaperones. So I would really quibble with his care about women and, and their rights. Um, and in fact, I would also mention that Action Network Fund, which is the group that's managing the website and the email list for this Women's March, is a group that their executive board is entirely made up of men. So here's a march that purportedly is about advancing women and making sure they're included in leadership. And many of the groups that they have, their funder is a male, George Soros, a very um, Rachel, you know, eccentric Rachel, billionaire, we and can, also we can, um, many of these groups are, are entirely led by men. Okay, Marjorie. Strange. Right, and, and only 1% of CEOs in the country are women. So the, the economic fact is there are more men who have more access to money. And it is absolutely imperative that men are backing women as we make this push for equality in terms of pay and everything else. This is at, women's issues are men's issues as well. So I actually find it refreshing and promising that men are investing in women's rights. It's a wonderful and beautiful thing. Marjorie, do you think we would have had I'm this looking march? Forward. Would we have had this march if uh, Hillary Clinton had become president? Um, of course absolutely. not. We These would issues not have, have not gone away. Marjorie, let me answer real quick. Marjorie. Yeah, sure. Abs absolutely. International Women's Day annually, you know, when Hillary Clinton was running and before, has always been an important day, again, about democracy and about women internationally. So I think women demonstrating and them feeling empowered is, is something that we hope will continue, and I think it's given voice to a lot of women that didn't have one before. Okay, we're, so we're, absolutely. we're almost out of time. Uh, so, Rachel, just yes or no, you think the march would have happened under a President Hillary Clinton? 
it wouldn't have, and many of the participants um, would have been uh, 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 that uh, have been uh, uh, excluded from this, including many uh, pro-life women's groups, pro-life feminist right. groups. Um, it just goes to show this is not about women's equality right. and choices. This is really about an anti-Trump march. We got to leave it there. Uh, Rachel and Marjorie, good to see you both.